What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, it's your boy Dominic Rich and in today's video I'll be predicting the quarterfinal of the 2021 CONCACAF Gold Cup. So grab a glass of your favorite beverage, grab a snack, sit back, relax and enjoy. If you're looking for the perfect gift for the football lover in your family, look no more, head on over to cardsplug.com slash DominicRichFC to get yourself one of these lovely football cards you see right here. Use the coupon code DominicRichFC to get yourself 15% off your orders. All the links will be in the description box down below. Discounts could range from 15 to 35% according to the season. So just go try it. You just might get 30% off. Thank you. So let's do a quick recap of what happened in the group stages. In group A, Mexico came out on top with seven points unbeaten throughout the group. El Salvador, who put up a really good show in, came in second with six points, while Trinidad and Tobago came third with two, and Guatemala at the bottom with one point. I have to say Group A was a very, very competitive group, and I was impressed with the performances of Trinidad and Tobago and El Salvador. Mexico, we expected them to do well. In Group B, the USA topped the group with a perfect nine points, while Canada came in second with six. Those two teams will move on to the quarterfinals. A depleted Haiti placed third, while Martinique came last in the group. I think Group B would have been more competitive if Haiti had their full squad, but you gotta give it to the second string USA team, who looked quite impressive throughout the group stages. As for Canada, I think they could have done a lot better. In Group C, Costa Rica also topped the group with a perfect 9 points while Jamaica came in second. Suriname, who a lot of people were expecting bigger things from, placed third, while Guadeloupe, who did not go down without a fight, placed last with 0 points. I have to say that Group C was also a very competitive group and I think Suriname could have done a lot better if they finished their chances. Guadeloupe did put up a fight and did show signs of promise but Jamaica, I think if they were more clinical in the final third, they would have definitely topped the group ahead of Costa Rica who had to grind out all their results. And for the most exciting group at the tournament so far, Group D, where Qatar came out on top with 7 points, Honduras second with 6, Panama third with 4 points after defeating Grenada 3 goals to 1. I know it's not reflecting it here, someone's not doing their job, or maybe I just needed to refresh my browser, that's all. Sorry. And Grenada at the bottom without a point with a minus 10 goal difference like I did predict. A lot of people are saying they don't want to see Qatar win the CONCACAF Gold Cup and it would reflect badly on the region. But guys, this is a quality team. This is just not a regular invitee where they'll get knocked out in the group stages or something or they're just making up numbers. Qatar is a quality team but I think they have been given a run for their money at the tournament against both Honduras and Panama. So they go on to top the group. They have been quite impressive but they had some shortcomings that we all took notice of throughout the tournament. An impressive Honduras plays second while for Panama who I never expected to make it to the quarterfinals plays third. I think they have to work on their defensive side of their game. And Grenada showed some promise, but they were always going to place last in the group. So let's start things off by talking about the first quarterfinal fixture between the invitees, the debutants, and the 2022 World Cup host Qatar versus five-time quarterfinalist El Salvador. I think most of us who actually pay attention to what's going on in world football knows what Qatar are capable of doing. They won the 2019 Asian Cup. They participated at the 2019 Copa America and were impressive and they will also take part in World Cup qualifiers over in Europe just to warm things up. So Qatar are definitely in the mix and they're getting some well needed experience before the grand event in 2022. So at the 2021 Gold Cup I think they have been very very impressive even though I think they could have scored way more goals than they did. The biggest problem for me is their sharpness in the final third of the field where their A striker Almoez Ali have been missing chances left, right and center for fun. And I also have to talk about their defense. I think they allow teams to get in behind way too many times and their keeper Basham has been a busy man. Even though they did not concede a ton of goals, if you go back to the game against Panama where they led three times but also allow Panama to get back in the game three times, there's a cause for concern when you come up against a more quality opposition 
in the CONCACAF region, maybe like a Mexico or a USA, etc., etc. But I think overall, it has been a quality performance by Felix Bas Sanchez and his boys. And standout player for me has been Akram Afif. Oh man, this guy just pulling the strings in the midfield. And if you have him and Aziz along with Hassan Al Haidos, uh, a guy like Almo Ali Klicken, or even a Muntari, this team will be very difficult to beat. And you also have to talk about Hatem, the, the left back. He, he is awesome as well. So Qatar has a quality team and the team has been playing with each other for quite some time with a whole lot of players with over 60 caps. So it, it's going to be a very difficult task for El Salvador to beat Qatar. So talk about El Salvador. I think Hugo Perez has done a great job with this team where at one point it seemed as if El Salvador will go into top group A, but Mexico and their quality came to the forefront and they barely scraped past El Salvador, like thin margins, paper thin. You're talking about crossbar, you're talking about upright hitting the... So it was very, very, very close and El Salvador, I think, give good account for themselves during the group stages and they have been one of the most impressive teams at the tournament so far. Looking good in all departments, Defense, midfield, and in attack. Eric Zavaleta is one of their standout players, and also the keeper Mario Gonzalez deserves a shout. So, look, group stages back in 2019 to make it to the quarterfinal in 2021 is an achievement in its own right. And I think if El Salvador gets knocked out in the quarterfinal, it would be a good achievement, nevertheless. But I think they have to get past this quarterfinal jinx. I really think they do quarterfinal quarterfinal five times this is the sixth time they, they gotta do better than that and get past the, the the this stage of the tournament for sure but coming up against a qatar team it's gonna be very difficult and i could see qatar moving on to the semis defeating el salvador three goals to one so my pick is qatar to progress el salvador to get knocked out and I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know a lot of the El Salvadorian fans are going to be like, I don't like El Salvador or whatnot. But guys, that's not the case. Qatar is a better team than El Salvador. And I think El Salvador have shown us that they would give the other teams in the octagonal for the World Cup qualifiers a run for their money. So keep your head up, El Salvador. But this time, Qatar will move on. And just to note, El Salvador and Qatar did meet each other before the tournament for a warm-up game where Qatar beat El Salvador one goal to nil with 10 men. So just take that into consideration, okay? So let's talk about the other match on this side of the bracket where the United States of America will play Jamaica. Back in 2017, Jamaica and the USA met in the final and the USA beat Jamaica two goals to one. They also met in the semi-final of the 2019 event where the USA did get the better of Jamaica once again. So Jamaica would want to exact their revenge on the United States of America and this would be the perfect time for them to do so as the USA have brought a second string team. But we got to be careful in the way we talk about this MLS heavy team because they have been nothing short of impressive. And I think the only stumbling block here could be Greg Berhalter and his selection policies. So for the USA, some of these guys are playing together for the first time ever in their career and a lot of guys have been making their debut. So this is just a team put together for the Gold Cup and to add depth to the USA squad for the upcoming World Cup qualifiers and to give Greg Berhalter some more options. And I gotta give this team credit because I've been very skeptical about this team. I even predicted Canada to top the group, but that was with an Alfonso Davies and I think a Jonathan David in the team, but we know what happened and none of those players took part in the event. The USA picked up a 1-0 victory over Haiti. They had to fight for that result, but they brushed aside Martinique six goals to one and they did find it hard to defeat Canada when they got over the finish line eventually one goal to nil. That game actually exposed some of the frailties of this USA team. So Jamaica would have to go back and watch that match and see in which way they could actually get behind this USA backline. But overall, I think job done, nine points. They have been quite impressive and they have actually overachieved in my opinion. For Jamaica, they have been impressive in patches and at other times, very, very disappointing. And when I say disappointing, I think Jamaica should have beaten Costa Rica and went on to top the group. But I don't know if that was a 
strategic move by coach Tapper Whitmore to make eight changes and maybe to lose the game to avoid the path of Mexico who knows I, I'm, I'm not sure but you have Qatar so that doesn't even make any sense but I think Jamaica is a team that has been showing promise they have been showing a lot of potential but they have not been fulfilling that potential because when you look back final in 2015 final in 2017 semi-final in 2019 what's it gonna be for 2021 in my opinion guys i i it's got it's really difficult to see this jamaica team get past this very young and spirited u.s men's national team unless greg berhalter does something really really stupid seriously i like the look of this team man i really do and i think it's gonna take a whole lot to beat them i'm not saying jamaica can't get past usa because they did beat them in a friendly back in 2019 courtesy of a brilliant goal by Shamar Nicholson but Shamar Nicholson has been very very poor at the 2021 Gold Cup he's probably their worst player where he can't seem to finish breakfast lunch now dinner so for this game I think Greg Borhalter will play a good 11 knock on wood for Jamaica I think they would put out their best possible 11 where they have Bobby Deckard over Reed I think coming back into the mix that'll help but I see a lot of weakness on the wings for Jamaica. So for the USA, attack down the flanks, cross the ball in, into the back of the net. That could be the order of the day. And I could see the USA defeat in Jamaica, two goals to one. So it's going to be Qatar versus the USA in the semifinal on that side of the bracket. So let's move over to the other side of the bracket where we have the reigning champions, Mexico, coming up against Honduras. Let's note that Mexico and Honduras did recently play to a nil-nil draw just before the tournament started. For Mexico, Tata Martino did not bring their strongest possible team, but still went on to top Group A. It wasn't without a fight though, because El Salvador, I think, really did give them a run for their money, and they picked up a nil-nil draw against Trinidad and Tobago. So, we see some frailties in this Mexican team that Honduras would look to capitalize on. But Mexico, I think, they are looking good still. With all that said, they, they still did not lose a game and they're looking good. But when you look at Honduras, who came in second in their group, uh, you know, they, 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 they're looking a little suspect though. And when you consider the injuries to Figueroa and to Quioto, Albert Elise not playing at his best, it's going to take a lot for Honduras to topple this Mexican team. So for this one, I won't be too long-winded. I won't go on and on and on and on and on because, guys, in my opinion, Honduras are not beating Mexico. I'm going to go for Mexico to beat Honduras two goals to nil. Sorry, Honduran fans, but this is where the tournament ends for you. But on the flip side, could we see the mighty Mexico getting knocked out in the quarterfinals? That would be crazy, right? Could Honduras actually do it? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. Not with the problems they're having right now after that Qatar game. Mm -mm. And last but not least, the match between Costa Rica and Canada. So the 2002 Gold Cup runners-up, three-time regional champions, quarter-finalists in 2019, Costa Rica. Could they actually do one better than last time around? Could they actually go on to lift their first ever Gold Cup title? Hmm, it's going to be difficult. They'll have to get past the 2000 champions Canada first. Canada also got to the quarterfinals in 2017 and in 2019 and would want to get past that stage to show that there's some type of progress happening with this team. Well, we know the progress from the World Cup qualifiers, but in terms of the Gold Cup, they would want to move on. Costa Rica won all three of their games in the group stages, but it didn't come without a struggle. Against Guadeloupe, where they won the game three goals to one, at one time in the game, they were held two goals to one so another goal for Guadeloupe would have meant they only picked up a point but they did get over the finish line in the end against Suriname they went behind and it took a brilliant five minute spell in the game for them to come back and won the match two goals to one but they had to really fight and grind out for that win against Jamaica one goal to nil and we know Jamaica could have scored on multiple occasions but they didn't so I think for Costa Rica they have been playing with fire all throughout the tournament and it's gonna be very difficult to get past a very spirited Canadian team who does have their trouble as well I think they have not finished well because if you go back with the game against the USA where they should have gotten something out of that game chances missing left right and center their type of team that try to play the ball out from the back and that's not really one of their strong points 
and they could make mistakes that could lead to Costa Rica capitalizing. But this is one of the more difficult quarterfinal games to actually analyze where I'm kind of on the fence with this because Costa Rica they have been relatively solid, have conceded a whole lot of goals, but their defense looks like it's got, it got some frailties. And Moreira, who picked up a red card in the last game, I think is better than Alvarado. So it's going to be interesting to see how that one plays out. But when you look at this Costa Rican team, they do have the experience of a Brian Ruiz, who did score that goal to beat Jamaica. They do have Joel Campbell. They do have Francisco Calvo coming back. They do have Kendall Waston and who who was suspended as well so they they do have a, a, a nice core and you have to mention kesha fuller as well the fullback this is gonna be a difficult costa rican team to beat and i know i'm probably forgetting some more key players but it's i think canada they have shown the promise with tejan buchanan being a live wire steven estakio see that free kick he scored and he have shown a lot of promise Junior Hoylet and Kyle Lahren have shown a little glimpse of their brilliance, but at times come up short. Cavallini, poor tournament so far. Mark Anthony K could be key in the midfield. I think I think their defense have done well, but it, it it's kind of a aging defense though. So that could be a problem. So could John Herdman's Canada get past a Lewis? Fernando Suarez's Costa Rica. Guys, in my opinion, I think, look, one of these teams are going to do one better than they did at the 2019 event where they both made it to the quarterfinals. And I think that team is going to be Costa Rica. I think Canada will show some promise. They would actually threaten. But Costa Rica would go on to win this game. And I think it's going to be a 1-0 affair. 1-0 to Costa Rica. I might be wrong, but... That's just what my gut is telling me. Costa Rica won, Canada nil. Costa Rica to move on to the semi-final to face Mexico. So I repeat, the semi-finalists, in my opinion, will be Qatar versus the USA and Costa Rica versus Mexico. So guys, there you have it. My predictions for the 2021 CONCACAF Gold Cup quarterfinals. If you have any predictions, please let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up button, share the video with a friend, and from your boy Dominic Rich, until next time, peace out. Rich? Squad. Peace.